So last we learned, we talked a little bit about ladders and the uh, tethering of Shamayim and Aretz of heaven and earth, and particularly as it relates to Yaakov Avinu. We saw that the Ramban sees things through the prism of, um, quoting from, from earlier source, the prism of history, and the idea that here uh, Yaakov Avinu finds himself in a reality that we've not uh, seen or heard about since the Brit Ben Abitarim. It's not a Brit per se, because that's already happened, but it's a, a recertification, a strengthening of the covenant, because uh, Yaakov Avinu realizes that he is going out on his own, that he's leaving the family as a family. He's leaving the homeland. And on the instruction of his uh, his his, um, his father and his mother, but at the same time, there is some uh, some departure. Uh, and uh, the idea that Kosh Baruch Hu comes to him and tells him that I will be uh, I will be with you uh, uh, throughout. Note that at the top of the ladder is the presence of a Kosh Baruch Hu Pasuk Yud Gimel. Right? We learned we we started it last time. I guess for, for ease of use, we should read the. Um, you know the, the the dream again. We we'd read this previously, but we'll try it again. Vinei Hashem nitzav alav vayomar ani Hashem elokei Avraham avicha velokei Yitzchak haaretz asher ata shochev aleha lecha etnena ule zar echa vaya zaracha kafar haaretz ufaratsta yama vakedma vitzafona vanegba vinivrachu vecha kol mishpuchot haadama uve zar echa. End of communication from a Kaddish Baruch Hu. Then Yaakov will wake up. So let's understand a little more about what's uh, happening here. First of all, in terms of Rashi, Hashem is Nitzavalav. Means Hashem is above Yaakov l'shamro to guard Yaakov, so he's not upon the ladder on top of the ladder, but he is on top of Yaakov. So Yaakov sees a ladder, but according to Rashi, Nitzav Alav refers to that Akadosh Baruch Hu is above Yaakov Avinu. Yeah. So uh, just for for uh, for consideration. The um, speech of a Kodesh Baruch Hu is almost like at Har Sinai. We just read, Ani Hashem, Elokei Avraham Avicha Elokei Yitzchak. So introdu in the introduction involves telling Yaakov, I am the God of your father Avraham and the God of Yitzchak. And Rashi here points out that normally, HaKadosh Baruch is not miyached shemo on a tzaddik who's still alive. God does not unify his name upon a tzaddik who's still alive to say the God of so-and-so. Um, and Rashi goes on to explain that it's something unique here about Yitzchak is the fact that he no longer can see and he is essentially confined to his household. He, it's like he has already left the world in a certain way. And therefore, uh, he does not have a Yetzir Hara, and therefore, Shem could say, okay, Yitzchak. Let me translate this into more prosaic language. Until the account is closed, in as much as the person is not yet um, part of posterity, in other words, saying, while the person's still alive, we don't know to the end of a person's life if they're going to fall to pieces. If the Yetzir will get the better of them, and they'll fall down from their high level. Therefore, Kodesh Baruch will not identify himself, so to speak, as the God of so-and-so, as that as an, as an descriptor until the account is closed, meaning they left the world still in their, in their righteousness. Since Yitzchak Avinu is stuck at home because he can't go out because he doesn't have the faculty of vision, so his Yitzhahara has abated, and therefore Kodesh Baruch will give me Yachid Shemo, on Yitzchak Avinu. Elokei Avraham Avicha, Elokei Yitzchak. Okay. Uh, Karen, you had a question or comment? Just very briefly, it just Please. struck me when we read this, this, this is where the particularization of the Jewish people 
is nailed in. Because mm-hmm. Avraham had two kids, so blessing by Avraham could go two ways. Yitzhak can go two ways. But here, this is this is where it is. This is right here where it is. Great, a great point. And that's that's uh that that's particularly the next pasuk in verse 14, right? Your progeny will be like the Afar Haaretz, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, we'll see though that there's actually still some ambiguity, which is going to be part of the problem for Yosef and his brothers. Mm. Right? They're not sure who's chosen, who's not chosen. But at least here there seems to be, um, it, it does seem to be more of a of a, a a winnowing that's gone on here and um something something to that to that to that um to that end so that the promise of the land is going to be fulfilled through Yaakov Avinu not through Ishmael and Esav and it sounds like it's to you and to your progeny and maybe all of your progeny sounds like yeah it ties into the name Israel yeah yeah which is ours. This that's late. That's late. That's later, though. That's later. He hasn't it's had his name right changed yet. Here, right here is where the winnowing, I think, is happening. So that yeah, was yeah, yeah. Very, 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 uh, very likely. Very likely. Uh, but just for our consideration, that there might still be some um, uh, some sort of um, room for maneuvering, which is why the brothers and Yosef are still going to have a time trying to figure that out. We're not up to that chapter yet, but we'll. We will get there. Um, Yaakov is promised by Hashem, the land that you're lying upon, I will give to you and to all of your progeny, and to your and to your progeny, all but and to your progeny. The land you're lying upon means you're in Eretz Yisrael, so you're going to get Eretz Yisrael. Rashi decides, and we have to ask ourselves, why did he choose to quote this Gemara from Asachet Chulin? Is this the Pshat? Kipel HaKadosh Baruch Hu Kol Eretz Yisrael Tachtav? Ramazlo uh, levanav. He folded all of Eretz Yisrael under Yaakov Avinu to hint to him that he will. Uh, it will be um, easy. I have no other word um, for his children to conquer it, and not in the first uh, manuscript of Rashi. But in other later manuscripts, we have also the words Adam, like the four cubits that is considered the denoted space of a, of a human being, right? The personal space of a human being is considered four uh, cubits, about eight feet, right? In all directions. That's that's Dalad Amot, the Dalad Amot of a person. Why, oh why, did Rashi feel the need to quote this Gemara that Hashem is folding the whole land under Yaakov Avinu. What do you think? Shelly, please go ahead. Are you saying that it's going to be easy? Rashi is saying it's going to be easy for them to conquer the land, Yaakov's descendants, because it certainly wasn't. So how do we um, put that in? It, 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 it's easy, but there's still something that they have to do. We never seem to get a blanket promise. There's always something that's got to be done that that we never managed to totally do. And I don't know, it's very discouraging for me. Well, I I would say in another way, which is if there is a positive uh, promise, um, it will be fulfilled. That's That's a faith statement. The question is to what extent it will be fulfilled and what will the time frame be? And the answer to that is it depends on humanity. If we're not worthy the first time, maybe we'll be worthy the second time, or the third time, or the umpteenth time. The discouraging part is: uh, do we do we do we actually do what we need to do as a people, as a humanity, etc., to to be worthy of uh, of the bracha? By the way, that's Yaakov's own concern, isn't it? I mean, um, he's worried. That's exactly what he's worried about, and. When the Jewish people arrive in the land of Israel at, at Yericho, it is easy. It is easy at Yericho. They go around seven times, the walls fall down. That's easy. Then comes the eye, and as we learned in Sefer Yeshua, it's not as easy. But why not? Well, we find out why not. It has to do with Achan and what happened there. 
Then there's 31 kings. It doesn't seem to be, it doesn't mean that there aren't casualties, doesn't mean that it wasn't a battle. But the point is, it it it, it doesn't seem like it was so complica complicated. Now, you'll ask me, well, what about all the Philistines, the police team they didn't rid themselves of? Or what about this? What about that? Yeah, well, that how much is that is, is, is Hashem, what about your promise? And how much of that is the reality of you didn't live up to what you were supposed to live up to? Meaning the people decide at a certain point, hey, we got a good piece of land here. Why do we keep conquering land and making problems with our neighbors? We'll just leave it as is. And that that's that's how it went down. I think we don't we weren't under any command to um conquer the Philistines, though. They're not one of they're not the seven nations. They're not one of the seven nations, but it certainly was part of Yeshua of Eretz Israel and to make something happen there. Certainly part of the, the, the land of Eretz Israel, even though they're not formally part of the Zion Ammin. Remember, because we've talked about the Plishtim as an amalgam of peoples who are called Plishtim because Liflosh is to invade. So that's what they did, and that's what happened. But, you know, but the, you're right. The mitzvahs are different because they're not the Zion, the Zion mitzvah. Okay, I got Karen and Shoshi waiting, so let me go over to them. Karen, please go ahead. Okay, I, I have a question on the text, Rabbi. On, on, on Pasuk 15, there's really four things there. I am with you. I will guard you. I will return you. I will not forsake you. And I don't know, do the Mephorshim have comments on why all four of those things are, are there? Um, I, I think these are different stages and phases of the... Um... Of the of the relationship that he's going to have and what this journey is going to be, I don't okay. I don't I'm not familiar with anyone saying like there's four and it's four cups or something like that. Or it's something, yeah. But I'll be with you. Like I'll guard you, guard you. I'll return you, and I won't forsake you. Interesting. Interesting. I will guard um, you. Pretty much the same as I will not forsake you. So I, it, it, again, it, there's a, a repetition. Yeah. In in there. Okay. Um, just just wondering. It, it's a great a great uh, great question um you know it was a great question um let me finish with the pusk we're up to now and i'll come back to this when we get there is that okay sure I'll, and i'll look in bereshit raba afterwards no no, no let's let's bookmark it i just I'm, I'm still on the rashi of hashem rashi quotes that hashem folded the entire land of israel underneath him so shelly pointed out well so it will be easy well how easy was it and the answer is it would have been very, very easy the whole time. We saw an example of that at Yericho. Didn't it? Didn't last. Why not? The people wrecked it. Well, can a, can can the uh, can the behavior of the people wreck a promise? Sure, it'll come true, but maybe it'll come true in much lesser or much different or abbreviated manner than it did uh, than it would have otherwise happened. But that depends on us. It's our responsibility. That's 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 where we come to the idea that Hashem is not just running things. Means that we're just marionettes. But there's an expectation that we're doing things, taking certain responsibilities that are consequences for Latov or not Latov. So, Shoshi. Um, I'm back a little bit on um, Elokei Abraham Avicha. Elke oh, yeah. So, why is it not Yitzchak Avicha? I mean, that is actually his father. Yeah. So, Chizkuni just points out that the Avicha is that he wanted to make a point that the Chirush is there, that why do you have to say Avram Avicha? It's not really your father. So Chizkuni says, yeah. Grants children are like children. But for his right. fa own father, didn't have to say it because it's so obvious. Something like that. But your question is a good one. Like, that is, that it, why, why is the formulation that way? Why didn't he call it his father? If we wanted to reopen the discussion with Parsha Toldot, we could start saying, you know, there was some, some distance there between the two of them, something, uh, something like that. I'm not sure how comfortable I am with it, but mm, yeah, it's possible. It, it's possible. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Rashi could have just kept a little bit of shot here and just said the land that you're sleeping on means the land of Israel, Eretz Canaan, something like that. Instead, Rashi, quoting the Gemara, wants us to imagine that uh, Yaakov Avinu sleeps on the ground and that a Kodesh Baruch Hu has taken the land of Israel and folded the whole thing, folded it up like a map, and put it underneath Yaakov Avinu. Does that sound like Pshat? Certainly not Pshat. It sounds like something that would happen in a dreamscape. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In a dream where you're at one moment uh, uh, awake, and then when you're sleeping, things are happening that are outside of the bounds of, uh, of, of the natural order. You could have also read, you could have also read, I say, with the thumb from the base of Madras, you could have also read the land that you're sleeping on over here means the little canton, the little area in this place that will soon be known as Beit El, that will belong to the Jews. The rest of it, I'm not giving that to your progeny. Rabbi Engel? Yeah. Oh, Tamar, hi. I don't see you, hi. but I hear you. Hi. Um, I just thought of something ironic looking at the sentence where uh, we're told that. Uh, we as a people will spread north and south and east and west and all yep. the peoples of the earth will be blessed through us. And I'm thinking it actually happened in the Galut. We spread out north and south and east and west. And indeed the Jewish people have contributed mightily to every culture they lived in. And when is Yaakov Avino getting this, uh, this dream on his way into? Canaan, Eretz Yisrael. He's in Eretz Yisrael. Yes. He's on his way out to oh. Galut. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I'm going to give you this land, number one. Number two, your progeny will be like the Afar Haaretz. The Nitziv over here in the Hemik Davar, he, uh, he points out that the usage, he said this already in Perak Yud Gimel, in chapter 13, when we learned it back in Parshat Lach Lecha, the notion of the Jewish people being compared to Afar Haaretz itself bespeaks, as opposed to stars in the sky, it's the, 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 the earth refers to exile. And therefore, the idea that like Afar Haaretz, you'll spread. By the by, I'm going to give this land to you and your progeny. And your progeny is going to you know, have um, have an influence, outsized influence over the whole world. And the families of the, of Earth will be blessed through it. But the notion of the Afar Haaretz, it's a lowly um, symbol. It's supposed to stars. When Yaak, when Avram Avinu has his dream, right? Remember? I mean, it's not called that there, but he has his prophecy. It says, Hashem took him outside, and it describes that Hashem according to one of the opinions there in the Medrash, quoted there, which some people didn't like. Ah, it's called so, that, that's, that's nothing to do with the Pshat. I'm telling you, but it's in the middle of a Nevoah. Anything could happen. It's a dreamscape. So where is he? So one of the opinions is he took him above this constellation of the stars. Like Hashem took him out of the world that he could see, he could look at the whole universe from outside. But Yetzirah to Achutza literally means God told him, go outside of wherever you are indoors, go outdoors and look at the stars, look up at the stars. But then, one of the Midrashim, Rashi quoted, said, no, it meant he's outside. What happens here? Shem tells um, Yaakov Avinu, the land that you're lying on, physical, terra firma, not about looking up. The up is just going to be the ladder, the connection, right? But where are your people? They're down below. Where's Eretz Yisrael? It's underneath you. Now, of course, wherever you're standing, you know, a little child could draw like a picture of planet Earth and put themselves in a stick figure on top and say, I'm standing on top of planet Earth. Aren't you standing on top of planet Earth? I know I am, because you're on the surface of it. It sort of has like a, right? There's an ambiguous meaning. Wherever er Yaakov you know, was sleeping, he was sleeping in Eretz Yisrael. It means the whole of Eretz Yisrael was underneath him. Well, by extension, it was. So the, the matter just says, no, the whole thing was like folded underneath him. If you think about it from an image perspective, the images... Like, Yaak, like Avram Avinu, his grandfather was taken out of the universe to look at what was beneath him. Yaakov was being told, I'm going to put the land underneath you. Instead of it being the vector up, it's the vector down. It's underneath you. And who are the people? They're not the stars. They'll be like the stars of the sky. Your children will be ka'afar ha'aretz. And, and, that, and there we do have the element of galut. Tamar, I'm going to throw in another element to this. I think it's from uh, Professor Aviva Zornberg. I think she's very into this idea, if I recall correctly, from years ago. But uh, she has an essay, I think she refers to Yaakov Avinu as the Prince of Darkness. When the sun sets on this story here in Parshat Vayetze, the sun will not rise again 
until Parshat Vayishlach when he finishes fighting with the angel. And we'll have several times things will happen to him at night. Yaakov, you know, going to sleep. For Avraham and for Yitzhak, we don't have anybody the going to sleep as a story. But for Yaakov, it is. Extrapolating from that, that's why Avram was metake in Shacharit, Yitzchak was metake in, they enacted Mincha, and Yaakov is metake and he enacts Mariv. That's over here. You know what that is? The prayer of Galut. Huh? And, and now the, the idea that this is the preparation for Galut becomes the template, and therefore now the ladders as four different uh, uh, um, uh, angels that are going up and down the ladders the latter, excuse me, singular, uh, are four different nations and epochs and eras. And we're, you know, Karen, you want to say something? Go ahead. And Helen, too. Okay, Helen, you're on deck. Hold on. Very, give me, give me a minute with uh, Karen. My, we'll take over. Okay. My, my, my question on those four um, assurances of Hashem, in fact, Thursday, Rabbi does bring it up. And it says, we will get to it a little bit later when Yaakov is making requests of Hashem. And we'll see some relationship between yes. the assurances and the that. So we yes. like, put this away and we can shelve this. Right. Don't stuff. shelve it. Just put it on your desk. You can need it for a minute. Set aside for now. Great. Thank you. That's amazing. Terrific. Uh, Helen, go ahead. Good morning. Please go ahead. Okay. In the story, Abraham, isn't there a word, Kardema? Yes. Yeah. He... He fell asleep well, in a, sim a similar state. Yes, it may not have been day or night, but it was no, no, no. Similar. You're yeah, agreed, agreed. No, I, I, don't misunderstand me. I I have been trying to say there's a parallel here between Yaakov uh, Avram Avinu at Brip and Abitarim, where there is a Tardema, and Yaakov Avinu as well. Uh, my point was just to say, and by the way, it says it got dark for uh, for Avram Avinu also. But oh, Aviva Zornberg's okay. point is many of the stories of Yaakov Avinu, more so than Avraham and Yitzchak, happen at night. And we're meant to know that it's night. And we're meant to know that okay. the sun is setting. And we're meant to understand that whereas for Avraham Avinu, you know, Avraham Avinu is, um, is uh, very much about the daytime and the morning. And we get by Eskim Avraham Baboker as a theme several times. It's not that Yaakov didn't wake up in the morning. The Torah even says by Eskim Yaakov Baboker. But his seminal moments happening at night. You'll have right up to the end where Yaakov and in Parshat um, Vayigash, he's going down to Egypt, chapter 46, Perak Memvav, it's going to say that Marot Halayla, he's going to have the visions of the night, again about the night. Again. So the point is just to say that this all is of a kind with what Tamar had said also about this. Is, isn't that a reference to exile more than it is to being in Eretz Yisrael? Right? Um, and then... Um, uh, Karen wrote in the Rambam discusses that for most of it, it happens at night. Moshe was an exception to this. That's right. That's right. Um, and even, by the way, when it was um, Avon Vinu's turn, it seems to be that he was also asleep. It's amazing that we don't have much by way of imagery about the life of Yitzhak Avinu. Hashem spoke to him, but we don't get the speaking of Hashem to uh, Yitzhak Avinu with this uh, uh, awareness of what the imagery is. Is to be like Shem just talks to him, beginning of Parsha told us, right? Or at the Akedah, Yitzchak's not speaking. And it's still not clear what Yitzchak himself sees at the Akedah, other than his father, other than Avram Vino. For Avram, we know, because it says, Shem spoke to him, etc., several times. Um, up to including, by the way, when the Malachim will come and talk to him as such. Yeah, oh, hell, you had something else to say? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yitzchak did talk. He says, what the heck is going on here? He, on the Mizbeach, he did talk. And, you know, where where is the sacrifice? So he did he talk to Avram. He didn't talk to Hashem. Yes. And Hashem didn't talk to him directly. That's true, yeah. And I That's got one other thing to say about, uh, one thing to say about Afor. Diamonds are in the Afor. And Saudi Arabia is very rich from fossilized fuel. So never Fine. underestimate the word afar. Uh, 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 There's a lot, okay. a lot of gold in afar. <laughs> well, well, the, the word afar here, like kochavim elsewhere, is meant to refer to something that is extremely, uh, 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 extremely large, a very large quantity, right? Oh, so that's what it means. A vast okay. quantity. I almost, I almost said infinite, but that'd be the wrong, the wrong word. That's why I was pausing. Or ubiquitous, 
it's not ubiquitous, but the point is afar, like like um, like stars, is innumerable. Maybe that's the right word. Isn't the quality different though? Isn't there very there much so? The afar. Sure. And by Abraham, Beyond reach and tactile, kicked around and illuminating. Oh, so many different things. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's my. That's the whole point I'm making here, socially. That's yeah. the, the whole idea here, right? Is like this. This is the motif for being in exile. I think that's, that's a definite, that was her whole point. Yeah, is that which is which is, totally is exactly what's happening. And you know, y'all can now. You could read this, by the way, also as you know, the land that you're lying on now. I'm going to give to you and your progeny. And your project will be like the land that is beneath you. They'll be like that. Like there are so many grains of sand all over and pieces of, you know, clods of earth all over Eretz Yisrael. That's how you're, 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 um, you will be from Eretz Yisrael as a platform. And back to, um, to Shelly's point from before, where I know she's disappointed about it, but that's, that's, that's life. That's the reality. Um, you could read this in two ways. If the Jewish people are worthy, then we'll have the Jewish people living in the land of Israel as a platform to impact the whole world in a very positive way. The whole world, global. If not, God forbid, then just so you know, there's a promise this land will belong to your progeny. But when you go to exile, you'll be like the, like the, you'll be beaten down like the, uh, like the, like the earth of the ground. But also you'll still make that, that, that mark. I just take a moment where I think all of us on this call, myself included, can share this as uh, older people, if I can put us all in the same basket for this purpose. But we do understand, of course, that in our, for some of us in our own lifetime, for some of us in our parents' lifetime, certainly all of us in our grandparents' lifetime, the idea that there could be a state of Israel and that there could be a world where there would be a global economy and a global communication system that would be instantaneous and to its advantage and its detriment um, um, ubiquitous and um, uh, just a, a constant flow of, uh, of information in all directions. But that's how we live now. So the idea that you know, a person will be reading this in, you know, 1752, living in, um, I don't know where, you know, in, um, in pick a place, in Warsaw, and is saying to themselves, we have an amazing postal system. I think that might be it, you know. Or there have been certain Jews over the course of Jewish history who have done certain things for the world. There are. There are such people. I read about them in a book. I picked, I picked a year, just random and place random, you know, but 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 it was not impossible to even wrap your head around what that meant. And today it 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 means the same thing, but it's 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 not not in the world of a dreamscape. It's it's pshat. The pshat is I can talk to my loved ones right now for free for as long as I want, and I can see them and interact with them. Right? Rabbi, that, that that's 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 something that's a it's it's a it's a pipe dream of 50 years ago. That it would be so easy and so available, yeah. So when you read this, like, oh, Zarachaya Kafar Artsu Harat the Yama Vakim it's a fun of I mean, I mean, what do you mean? Literally, they're going to go everywhere. Literally, they're going to go everywhere. Literally, going to have an impact on the whole world. Literally, going to have an impact on the whole world. How could it be? It is. It is. If that doesn't inspire you, I don't know what will. But okay, well, uh, Karen, I, question. Yeah. Yes, just just a comment to what you were saying. Those yeah. of us who grew up in Chicago of a certain age, when we were kids, one of the big attractions at the Museum of Science and Industry was a picture phone. You could talk, they had this thing and there was a screen and you'd do it and it was to Disneyland in California. So kids wow. could pick the phone up and see a kid in California. There'd be a line of kids waiting to do this. Right. It was like science fiction. Right. Now every now every, every one of those kids now is holding the phone in their own pocket. No <laughs> lines. <laughs> right. No lines. Right. Right. So, you know, that's like and um and there you, and there you have it. And there you have it. So, so we're, we're 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 looking at it here, right? And we we see we see each other. By the way, we're having this sheer on Zoom. I forgot that part. Oh yeah, by the way, everyone, no one has even left home and we're all interacting with each other, you know? Um, oh, there's that part. Okay. 
So um, um, just also, well, the, um, sorry, someone else? Was that Helen well, again? Go ahead, yes. please. Okay, Leia Poland gave a talk that the chip that we use in all our phones globally is perfected in Israel. Right. And so, so that global extension of how we have already affected globally, if not in people, in our work of our hands. Yes. So I just thought. Yes. Yes. It's great. That's great. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Before we go to the next, uh, the next, the next pasuk. Okay. So, um, pasuk, uh, pasuk tedvav. V'inei anochi imach u'shmarti ra b'chol ashe teleich v'ashivoti ra l'admazot ki lo azovcha ad asheri masiti ed asheri barti lach. Rashi, right away, ad asheri uh, asher masiti, the word im here, right? Uh, ad or im, uh, ad asher im asiti, sorry. Kiasiti, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna fulfill this whole thing. I'm bring you back home. Everything's gonna work, right? Um, how long will it take? Doesn't say. Yeah. So the um, the idea here that um, the 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 time frame is open ended. Could be very short, could be very long. Could be Yaakov himself, could be his children. Doesn't say. And it's worthy of our consideration that we're not entirely sure how, um, you know, how how to, um, how to understand it, how Yaakov is going to understand it, which is going to explain why he's going to be afraid when he meets his brother. Because maybe he came back home already, and therefore maybe the promise is finished? Question mark. What does ad asheri masiti mean? Until I do that which I spoke to you that I'm going to do. Worthy, worthy of, of contemplation. If we put ourselves in Yaakov in his mind to try to understand like what, what, what does that augur for him when he's very much, uh, he's very um, afraid. The Sforno just says, Shelly, give me one more minute. The Sforno says, um, what I said here that after a lot of the galut, you'll be everywhere. You will not be destroyed by the tsarot of the galut, of the, the trials, the suffering of the galut. Uh, because during your entire time in exile, I will not abandon you. And he quotes from the Pasuk at the end of the book of Vayikra in the Tochacha, where Hashem tells the Jewish people that even though they will be all the way out in exile, I'm not going to abhor them or uh, 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 um, uh, what's the word? Be desp despise them, right? In other words, I'm still going to have a relationship uh, uh, with them. I'm going to I'm going to make sure to bring you back, uh, bring you back uh, home, um, and um, make this uh, make this happen, right? Um, and um, uh, the the idea that once he comes back home, it's not just that's the end of the journey, but that's going to be the expansion. Of uh, of the bracha, he again quotes from the Torah. I will walk with you, right? Um, the Ada Sheri Masiti Ada Sheri Barti Lach means I won't abandon you in exile till I bring you back home. Now I'm not going to abandon you back home, but the point is now that you're going out, walking out on the line, you're going to be by yourself. Just realize you're not going to be alone. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to guard you. I'm going to bring you back, and I I, I will not uh, I will not abandon you out there. I'll bring you back, right, with your children, et cetera. As, as we're learning, it's going to be progeny, et cetera. Shelly, question, comment? Yes, um, I'm wondering if any commentator came up with this idea. Uh, right. Just like what God says to Avraham that the uh, the sin of the Amorite uh, is not such that you can't ki that they get out of the you know that I yeah. can kick them out of the land now. Is the reason that there's not a Time given in in part in what is it uh, verse fifteen because yep. of God's concept of free will and the fact that God does not know when Asav is going to cool down or if he's going to cool down that maybe that that's the reason there can't be this is an open ended thing because right. 
you know, if, if Asa right, was, I, I was nodding, I was nodding along with you until you got to the part where you said God doesn't know. So that's well, God, where we're God, we don't know. But we, don't knows, know. we could say Yaakov he, doesn't know, and Hashem cannot reveal that to Yaakov Avinu. If he gave him the exact time, then that would violate uh, um, Asa's free will. So he did that, it. Right. That's a symptom of, of God having free will. God knows all, but he gives free will. And there always is a possibility that somebody's going to change his mind, uh, too. So uh, God is not going to interfere. I would just want to know if the commentators ever said anything that, that, that God is... Related to Esau? Because of Esau. At I this point, we don't know when Esau is I don't, I don't remember any. I didn't see any. But that does not mean that they're not out there. Put it that way. Okay. You know, um... Uh, doesn't mean they're not they're not uh, they're not out there. I'll, I'll say it like that. Uh, I just you know um, don't know. Um, I don't want to say the wrong thing. I, I don't I don't remember a commentator making this about Ace of it all. Um, so I guess I'll 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 stop there before I get myself in trouble. I, I don't know. Um, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Shoshi, go ahead, please. Um, I'm answering Karen from before, the four oh. languages. So the Balaturim seems to say to the Gematria of the Arba Machias, the four different kingdoms. We talked about that last time. We saw it, we yeah. saw that from the Pikachu of Eliezer, that's right. what the Ramban quotes from as well. Yeah, same idea, right. He's but he right. says it about the four languages here? Yes, he says, oh, great. Yeah. Cool. Those are the four different. Uh, oh, there you have it. Karen, there you go. I've not seen the Palaturim. That said, we will see that Yaakov is going to almost repeat these back in line 20 and then echo back the, the uh, I will not forsake you. Right. You'll, you'll right. see it's just going to be mirrored back. Right. Right. The idea here that what Yaakov is hearing about is about the future. It's a reassurance in the moment, but he's hearing about the future and possibly a template of Jewish history. Um, and, and, and would explain also exile and redemption and, right? Um, brings us to the, the Radak. I'm gonna close the Radak today because he kind of wants to put another lens on the, the whole dream, the whole experience. He allows that there are a lot of different ideas within Chazal. The one he picks up is the idea that the, the Sulam, he says there are some who say, he quotes it in, um, in, um, from Breshit Rabbah, that the latter actually and the whole dream refers to Mamad Har Sinai. And therefore, the, 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 and he says, you know, a hint to this is that the word Sulam is the Gematria Sinai. So they're like the same thing. That's from the Madras, Breshit Rabbah. And it's it's on the ground and it's tethered to the uh, to the Shemayim. So the Radak says, you know, it, that's that's like Mamad Har Sinai, right? The Elyon and the Tachton, everyone's connected. The angels going up and down. He sees it as it's Moshe and Aaron. Yaakov can't understand this, but they're going up and down. The Malachim going up and down. When you read our parsha this past week, parsha Yitro, their uh, Moshe are going up and down. Hashem is on top. Bini Hashem Nitzav Alav, right? Not on top of Har Sinai. Not, I gave it away. Not on top of Yaakov, you know, like I interpreted before, but on top of, like on top of Har Sinai. So on top of the whole scene is Hashem, like on top of the ladder. And the Sulam is Sinai, right? Some say, no, maybe it's really the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, the Korbanot that are being offered. And the Korbanot that are being offered in the Sulam is the Mizbeach. The, the Rosh is in the Shamayim. Why is it in the Shamayim? That's the, that's the smoke that uh, goes up to Shamayim. And at the top, there's a cloud of some sort, right? So the Malachel Kim Olim Viyordim maybe is uh, the Kohanim who are going to perpetuate the connection through the Korbanot, right? And we find further along in the, you know, in the, uh, uh, he goes on to say that um, he sees, ya that Yaakov sees himself He's outside of himself. He sees himself in the dream. And that he sees that he's actually on Har HaMoriah. And he realizes it's Har HaMoriah from Avram Avinu. And that's the Beit Elohim that's coming later on. 
right? And therefore, he has this whole this whole uh, 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 dreamscape. Again, there's so much malleability between the different midra- within the words of the Torah that the midrashim have each one another entry point to say it's this, it's this, it's this, and the answer on a certain level, which is mind-boggling, is it's all of them. That's the flexibility in the language, davka, there could be multiple traditions were not necessarily in contradiction to each other. The continuity of Avon Vino at, at Har Moriah is connected to, Har Sinai is connected to the return uh, uh, to Har Moriah with a piece of Har Sinai, the Luchot, coming back and putting it onto the mountain uh, in Yerushalayim. And there is the continuity, what's the bridge between them is a Mizbeach, that is built at Har Sinai with offerings, which is the continuation of the Malachim going up and down in Zimosha Aaron, which is then taken on by Aaron the Kohen, back and forth, up and down, yeah. Then uh, as the smoke, then uh, being offered, the Devar Hashem coming down to Moshe and the Olamoid, the Mishkan going to Yerushalayim, the building of the Mikdash. And of course, as someone should point out now, well, there were a few twists and turns between all those steps, weren't there? Yes, there were. Yes, there were. Yeah. Um, the uh, just so you realize, the, the Rambam has an entire he sees here the description of the universe of the orbits of the celestial realms going on here in the Mora and Vuchim. The Radak quotes this, uh, 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 in a very positive light, but you know, the idea, the 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 um, the um, uh, the, the, the different the different uh, rungs, its width, uh, its uh, its its height. The angels going up and down. There are four to go up, to come down. Uh, we have the connection, the different elements of the universe. So a lot going on here uh, that um, is very hard to uh, to understand. Um, and um, I want us to understand the relationship between Shamayim and Aretz, the celestial realm. I don't mean the stars. I mean the spiritual realm, Shamayim in the spiritual sense of it, and the corporeal realm and the different gradations that are up and down. The four, the four. Uh, 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 again, this number four is a very important number over here uh, that's going on. The, the, the angels are four such angels, etc. So uh, four worlds, maybe. Now uh, you go into the world of Hasidut, right? Uh, the different different worlds, uh, different dimensions. There's a lot of different uh, ways of of uh, understanding it. But the Radak has the following trenchant line. We'll end with this. Sof, it's not the end of his commentary, but it's what we need here. Sof davar, hamar e hazot hayala haskilat Yaakov han hagat ha'ulam heyach hi. The end of all things, this vision was in order to teach or to show, to demonstrate for Yaakov the way of the world, how the world functions. V'shi'ai de emtsa'im, and that there are in this world intermediaries between Hashem and the world. Ulofisha bore cheralo zeh, because he was running away, he had to be shown this. That the great, you know, the one who's over everything, who's overseeing it, who really directs and rules over all of this is God. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, and he can change the way things function uh, as he wills. Right. He's going to give him this land to him and to his progeny. It's the exact moment when things are getting unraveled for Yaakov. He's leaving the land. He's leaving his family. He doesn't know what's coming next. He's going off into the unknown, right? Hashem reassures him, just so you know, there's a whole structure here. Now, again, it's a structure of Jewish history. It's a structure, again, possibly, excuse me, of the, of the, the way that Hashem runs the world in terms of, um, of angels within an individual's life. Uh, and the Malach and the Hashem sends, etc. The Hashem is running things. It could be a template we saw today, maybe Sinai, maybe, maybe of uh, Avodat Hashem, maybe of the notion of Galut generally as a concept. And nonetheless, the sign that Hashem is with you is that even out there, you're still having a great, will have a great impact, and you'll cause a, a bracha to go to the uh, to all the families of uh, of the world. Uh, Karen, closing thought. It is up and down, but the ladder is constant. Yes, indeed. That's not a variable. That's, uh, so to speak, Hashem fixed it into the uh, into the world. And I also see here that um, another creature in your household uh, <laughs> typed some comments. Who knew? I didn't notice that till right now. Amazing. Okay. Anyway, thank you. I saw it in the chat. 
Uh, <laughs> it too is participating in the keyboard. Uh, I wish everyone a great day, great week. Uh, God willing, we will learn on Thursday of this week, Amir Hashem and our other seer, uh, Malachim Aleph. Come join us, one and all. Uh, and uh, looking forward to resuming next Monday.